Hello, runners. Average Running PT here, and I'm going to talk today about math training or mathetone style training, and I'm going to tell you guys what it's done for me over the past three months. So, math training or maximal aerobic function training is also known as mathetone training. It is not math is not short for mathetone, although I'm sure he was happy to uh, use that happy coincidence there. But basically what Maffetone style training is, is low intensity training. And if you've ever heard of polarized training, this is the lower end of that polarization spectrum, okay? So this is where you are really focusing on building that aerobic base, building your maximal aerobic capacity, and helping you to stay injury free. And basically what it is, math level training is spending the majority of your training miles at the math level. So what is that math level? Now there's a very kind of controversial formula that Phil Maffetone has developed over years of working with thousands and thousands of runners. Now does this formula work for everybody? No, it doesn't. However, it's a great starting point. And I think that it has really helped me over the past three months to dial back my training so that one, I haven't gotten injured in the last three months. I have improved my aerobic capacity and it has allowed for me to do much, much better in my actual speed or higher intensity workouts because I am well rested. So let me tell you a little bit more about that formula so that you know what we're talking about. So the formula is 180 minus your age to get your math level heart rate, your maximal aerobic function heart rate. Okay, so take 180 subtract your age. I'm 32 years old, so if I take 180 minus 32, I end up with a number of 148. That is my maximal aerobic function heart rate that I need to be working at in order to stay within my aerobic capacity. Again, is this a perfect formula? No, it's not. However, it gave me a great guideline starting back in December of, of 2019 to start using going forward to help me with improving my aerobic capacity, improve my ability to stay injury free, and actually make my harder workouts that much easier. So the range that I try and stay within then is about 138 to 148. There's kind of that 10, 10 beat per minute kind of range that I like to try and stay within. Um, now, the formula also accounts for if you have had an injury, if you've had illness, if you've had, uh, if you've been a, a kind of an elite athlete, then you might be able to either bump up that number just a little bit, or you might have to take it down five or 10 beats per minute based on whether you've had an injury or you've been ill. For me, I've been fairly healthy over the course of that entire time, except for one week where I did have a little bit of an illness. So with that week, I basically just stopped running altogether, ran like eight miles total in that entire week. So I kind of just took it easy, didn't worry too much about it. But then when I came back, I started back nice and easy at my math level and a little bit lower to try and ease back into things without getting injured. So again, what's the goal of Maffetone style training? Again, is to improve your aerobic base on which you can build from there. To improve that aerobic capacity, to decrease injury and illness. You know, I ran into somebody that was sick, so I, get, I ended up getting sick, so just kind of the way it was. Couldn't really avoid it. For me, another factor is as a physical therapist, I think about this component is to improve connective tissue strength. So it's really easy when we start running hard to overload what, what our body can actually handle. I know for me, I've always had that tendency to overload my body and do way too much 
and end up with an injury down the line or getting sick down the line or peaking too early. And that's just been my kind of MO for a long, long time. So let me tell you a little bit more about that, about my background as a runner. So I ran cross country in high school. That's when I really started kind of getting into running. Now I ran track in, in, in seventh and eighth grade, but then I started playing soccer and I was mostly into, into soccer. But I was convinced by my high school cross country coach to, to, go out for the, to go out for the cross country team. Ended up running four years of cross country from ninth to 12th grade. Ended up having a freaking blast. However, here is my problem with running distances. I thought every, every run, every single day, was a max effort workout. That was my MO across the board. I just had to do better th that day than I did the day before. I didn't understand polarization of training. Even though my coach tried to get me to slow down on those easy days or tried to get me to rest uh, for longer periods or, or things like that, I didn't understand why and I didn't listen. So basically, I didn't get the full benefit out of my training and what ended up happening is pretty much without fail every single year i would run my best race in like the second or third to last race of the season so i would peak way too early and then at the end of the season i would fade off and run some of my worst races of the year so now here i am 14 15 years later age 32, my body doesn't recover the same way to pounding out workouts every single day. I have to take that rest. I have to go slower. I have to, you know, all these different things. And I've never felt like I've fully developed my aerobic capacity. Now that I'm understanding more of this as I get older, I'm starting to kind of change my mindset. And what I've noticed is when you look at some of the greats, of course, the first one to come to mind right now at this present time is Elliot Kipchoge, who runs at basically what he says is he never runs at more than 90% of his max effort level. That's even in his speed workouts. So if, you, if you're talking about the greatest marathoner of all time running at su super easy levels on easy days and then never even going above 90% on his hard days, that tells me that I was doing this thing completely wrong. But of course, we've all heard it, no pain, no gain, give 110%, make sure you're pushing yourself and leave it all on the field. That's exactly what it should be for competition, not what it should be in training. So I wanna make sure that I, I'm, I'm putting that out there uh, as to you know the reason why I started to kind of shift my mindset. I started hearing about these elites, these, these big time runners who would run eight minutes a mile on their easy days. And I thought, well, I run eight minutes a mile or even 7.30 a mile on my easy days. What's going on here? Why am I not performing the same way that they do on, on race day? They know that those easy days make it so that they can perform much better on their hard days. So let's bring it back now. Let's bring it back to Maffetone level training. So here's been my history with Maffetone level training. I started to kind of hear about it a little bit at the end of last year. I uh, started thinking about, you know, is this something that I should do? But I didn't have a heart rate monitor. I didn't have a GPS watch. I didn't have a heart rate, a heart rate monitor on my wrist like a lot of people do. Um, so I just said, you know, forget it. I'll just run on effort. And when I would run on effort, I felt like I was taking it really easy. But I was still running in that eight minute, maybe eight thirty kind of a range. But then I got a GPS watch. So I went and got me a Garmin. And Yes, I'm aware the, the heart rate, the built-in heart rate monitor on the wrist, not entirely accurate, 
believe me, I am completely aware of this. However, I felt like it was a start. It was something that I could look at, something I could use in order to help me figure out, you know, is my effort level, you know, what I'm feeling when I'm out there running, does it match what my body is actually experiencing? And here's where I was kind of caught by surprise. I, I looked at the math tone formula. I looked at the math formula and I, I took 180 minus my age, which was 31 at the time, and I knew that I should be running at a heart rate of about 149 or below, okay? So I knew that, and on my first run with my watch, I went out for a nice easy stroll with my wife and just we were just kind of plodding along nice and easy real slow really slow probably oh what was it we were probably running 11 or 12 minute miles it was super slow because we were just out and about doing whatever now it was hot that day too so that that plays into this but my heart rate was in the 160s like high 160s and i was looking at it and i thought you know what this heart rate monitor it can't be right it can't be right every time i go out and run it was up in the 160s, 170s, 180s. If I would go out and run an eight minute mile, I'd be up in the 180s, which is nuts. And that's like, what the heck? I know I shouldn't be there, but here I was, and I was just, and I, and I felt like the effort level was not that high. And that's the thing. What Maffetone training has really taught me is what is an easy day? And it's really helped me to dial things back so that I can perform on those harder days. So here's what I did. When I started to kind of look at this and say, okay, what does it take to actually bring my heart rate down under that 150, you know, that 149 number and below. And basically what it took was 11 minute miles that had rest breaks or walking breaks. And it just took me forever to, to, to dial this thing in. Talk about frustrating. 11 minute miles when I'm used to running eights or even 730 on my easy days. I'm used to running a mile. I, I could run a mile at 545 at the time. You know, I, I can run a mile at 545. So uh, why in the world am I having to run 11 minute miles on these easy days. It doesn't make any sense to me, but I stuck with it. And I got to where I was able to keep my heart rate under 150, 11 minutes a mile, 10, 30, 10, 9, 45, 9, 30. And now I can even run some miles below somewhere around like 9, 10 on certain days, maybe the temperature's just right, there's no humidity, you know, all these kind of factors that kind of play into the heart rate. But there are days when I can go out and I can run and I can go about 9.10 to 9.15, maybe 9.30, somewhere in that range and keep my heart rate at like 145. This has happened over a period of three months. That's the thing I wanna point out with math style training. This doesn't happen in a day, it doesn't happen in a week, it happens over a period of months. Some people it takes three months, some people it takes six months, some people it takes 12 months. What you're really practicing, if you're new to math training and if you're used to running faster, you're really practicing patience. That's what math training is all about. Now, if you're brand new to running and you have no idea what it's like to run fast and you're just wanting to get into it for exercise, it may be real easy for you to jump in and start doing you know, these easy runs and just feel like, no big deal. I, it's, it, it's easy to keep my heart rate down because I'm, I, can have, I have no problem with running slow. But for somebody like myself who's used to running, back in high school, I ran 1830s for, for 5Ks like I said, I've run five, now 538 recently for a mile. My mile PR is 513. I'm used to running fast. I was a soccer player. I'm used to sprinting all over the field. But what I really had to learn is patience with this math style training.
Now, if I followed Maffetone's style of training perfectly to the T throughout the course of this thing, absolutely not. I haven't. I have been doing, I did Maffetone style training for about three months, and then I started incorporating a lot more speed work, tempo work. So I was doing Maffetone style training for, um, for most of my runs during the week, but now I've incorporated speed work on one day of the week and a tempo style or tempo kind of pace run on another day of the week. So if I'm running six days a week and I've got two days that are higher intensity, four days that are lower intensity, that's kind of where I'm at right now because I'm training for a 5K. Now, once I get to the point where I've run that 5K, then I can kind of, then what I plan on doing is dropping back to probably five days a week of, of easy Maffetone style training and one day a week of more of like the speed work so that I can, so that I can continue to build this aerobic capacity that I think is just getting started. Like I said, I can run miles at, at the kind of that 9.10 to 9.30 kind of a pace at Maffetone level and hold that pretty well. But I think there's still more for me to achieve. Like, I really honestly think that eventually, as I continue to work on this over the next three, six, 12 months, I think I can get to where my math level, my 149, 148 beats per minute, I can maintain that maybe at 845s or 830s or even eight minutes a mile. I honestly think that over time, and it could take years, it could take two or three years for me to get there. But I think that over time, that aerobic capacity just builds and builds and builds and builds. I don't think you can max that out really quickly. I think that takes a few years to actually max out your aerobic capacity. I think I've got a long way to go with that. So I plan on sticking with Maffetone style training for quite some time. I think what I plan on doing though is every now and then if I have a certain race that I want to perform at, I might break off from Maffetone style training and do three or four weeks of, you know, a little bit more high, higher intensity stuff with, with the easy recovery days in there, um, just to sharpen up for those races. But for the most part, I think I plan on sticking with Maffetone style training for a good period of time. So I do plan on revisiting math training in future videos, but I think it's going to be months down the line so that we can kind of discuss, you know, have a better case study of how I've actually progressed over time. But right now, like I said, I am spending a little bit more time at, with, with some speed work and some tempo style work that gets me outside of that math style uh, uh, training level. But here's where I think math training is, is really, really beneficial. I think there's certain populations where it's gonna help people a lot, and that's certainly with brand new runners. I think if you can get brand new runners doing Maffetone style training, kind of watching their heart rate and keeping their intensity level low early on, then I think what that's gonna do, it's gonna allow them to be less injured over time. A second population kind of going along those lines are maybe people that have taken some time off of running, whether it's due to an injury or due to life circumstances or whatever it is. I think that doing Maffetone style training for this population where they've been taking some time off of, of running, whether it's two, three, six months, but they come back and they want to make sure they, they, they shouldn't jump right back into their same intensity level that they were doing before. I think they need some time to build connective tissue strength, to build their aerobic capacity back before they start getting into that higher intensity level stuff. So here's my question for you. Have you tried Maffetone style training? Have you tried MAF training, maximal aerobic function? Um, if you have, leave a comment. If you haven't, what other questions do you have? I would love to answer those questions in the comments. Or if you know somebody that has done this, but you haven't, then, then tell me about it. Tell me about it in the comments. Let me know what's going on uh, and what has your experience been with Maffetone style training. So you guys get out there, make sure that you're working to get above average. And if Maffetone style training is your way of doing that, then that's fantastic. It's worked well for me over the last three months. 
I plan on continuing with it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know, what is your experience with math training? Have you done it before? Do you know somebody that's done it? Did you plan on doing it? Just remember, if you do, it takes patience. It takes a lot, a lot of patience. Happens over a period of months, not over a period of days or weeks, okay? So just be patient with it, let the body adapt. And what you'll probably find is you're a lot more eager to get out there and run every single day because you have a little bit more energy. So let me know what your experience is. Get out there, be above average, and I will talk to you soon.